I'm your host, T. Mitchell Bell, and we have here in the studio Mr. David Story from Toronto, Canada. How you doing, David? I'm good. How are you today? Cool, cool. Good to see you. Good That's see a big you. trip. Did you come in this morning? or did you No, come in we came. I drove in yesterday. It was a beautiful drive down. I guess it's I-79. Wow, it, the leaves yeah. are changing, and it was just beautiful. And what a great drive. And then being in uh, Washington, PA here, I didn't really know Washington, PA, and it's a fantastic little town, a lot of history and great buildings, and this campus is beautiful. It's really, beautiful yeah, it's campus. it's uh, and it's trusty weekend, so everybody's around walking around, and here everything is alive on the campus. But yeah, it's a good time of year to come and visit. Too, yeah, so. and the leaves are changing, but everybody's still walking around in shorts and t-shirts. And uh, <laughs> yeah. up in Canada, where I'm from, we're already got our furry coats and. And winter boots broken out, so. Okay. Well, hey, I usually ask guests to uh, just dig in and play something right off the top. Um, sure, Do yeah. a song, kind of shake the nerves off, do all that, you know. Sure. What uh, What were you going to do? Uh, I'm going to do a song called The Last Loon on the Lake, and it's a perfect fall song. I think it'll fit in here uh, in, the, in this area really nicely, so. This is David Story on Acoustic Songs Live from WNJR. My friends have flown on I'm the last loon on the lake Ice in the bay And I should fly away I'm the last loon on the lake Frost in the ground And the leaves are all down My friends all think I'm crazy I like a frosty sunset And they're all south Drinking margaritas And hanging with Jimmy Buffett And the sand boils beneath their wings The sun is a flaming ball And I'm up here Drunk on Lake Port Waiting for the last leaf to fall I'm the last loon on the lake Summer is gone and my friends have flown on I'm the last loon on the lake Ice in the bay and I should fly away I'm the last loon on the lake Frost in the ground And the leaves are all down Fortunes are made And fortunes are lost The powerful come and go The truth, ah yes the truth Depends on who you know This world spinning out of control I can feel it slip away It's nice and quiet up here on my own I think I'm gonna stay I'm the last loon on the lake Summer is gone And my friends have flown on I'm the last on the lake Ice in the bay And I should fly away I'm the last Loon on the lake Frost in the ground And the leaves are all down I'm the last Loon on the lake
Awesome. All I right. love it. I love, it. I love that song. Thanks. I can uh, just picture, you know, the, the whole scene. You know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I have a friend, and I, I have an introduction when I do that song, and my friend says, oh, that introduction is all wrong. You've got to... You gotta set the scene, David. You know, you gotta tell everybody that it. You know, you're up in the, up on a lake up north somewhere in a beautiful log cabin with windows overlooking the lake, and you know, there's a fog, <clears throat> a little bit of mist on the lake, and the leaves are changing, and out of the the uh, f- uh, mist comes the loon, and you're the loon, David. You're the loon, and I'm going, okay, I could say that, but it'd all be bull. <laughs> it was. It, it it is a little tongue in cheek, right? The yeah. song itself, yeah. like. What's yeah. what's the uh, background behind that? Um, oh well, I was my daughter was working on a um, up on a golf course uh, north of Toronto where I live and uh, out in the country, and it was in the fall, late fall, and she drove the uh, golf cart, you know, around the golf course, serving beer and sandwiches to the golfers, and uh, I guess she must have seen a loon or a, a, a goose or something in one of the ponds up there on the golf course, and when I went to pick her up, she got in the car and she said. Dad, Dad, you got to write a song about the the last bird. You know, the last bird up the up north before the rest. The rest of them have all flown south, and this guy's here all on his own. So I went okay. So I went home and I was came up with this guitar riff, this one, and I was trying to think of the last bird. You know, the final finch in the ferns, or you know, the the last goose in the gulch, or drunk. <laughs> duck in the ditch or whatever, right? <laughs> Anyways, I finally came up with the last loon on the lake. And uh, that seems to work. Yeah, or the last snowbird, you know, if you're in Florida or anywhere. Yes, yeah, the last snowbird. <laughs> you, you yeah, there, on, I could have done that too, yeah. There's Ontario license plates. Yeah. You see them, you know, like, oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. and Quebec license plates you see down there quite a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, you're from... Toronto, Canada. I was looking at your bio and and the your story. You know, David's story. Story. Uh, that's right. Ah, uh, sorry for the pun. No, that's that, okay. But the story um, is very interesting. How you you were out of music for like twenty years, raising a family, and then you're releasing. This is really your debut CD, your professional debut. Or well, or I yeah, I played a lot in um, the eighties, seven, late seventies and eighties. And um, I went through a bunch of different incarnations. I was a folky for a while, and then a country guy for a while, and then a punker for a while, and then a new wave guy. But at the end, I ended up being a folky, which is where my my heart is. And um, and then uh, you know, it, it in those times, if you didn't get signed by a record company, it was really hard to make a living. And although I was playing quite a bit and I'm doing well, and I'd put out uh, like an EP and had some singles out there and a video that was being played on much music. I wasn't really making a living. So I, and at that point I had kids and a family and Mm -hmm. I had to kind of say, well, you know, I don't want to be playing in bars at night, you know, while I'm raising a family. So Mm -hmm. I got, I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to start um, directing music videos. So I started very small and then, but fairly quickly I got, uh, I, I made it up in the music video director ranks and, I don't. Uh, there was a song. I'm not sure if you, you got it um, in the U.S., but it was called "Life Is a Highway" by an artist in Canada called Tom Cochran. Oh yeah, I love yeah. Uh, his band, uh, Red Rider. Red yeah. Rider. Yeah, yeah, that uh, Lunatic Fringe. And, yes, that's right. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, well, yeah, one of my favorite songs he did up on Avenue A. I yes, love that right. song. Yeah, and he did Victory Day, and uh, he's done a lot of uh, tons of really great music. Anyway, I did I directed a music video for him for Life Is a Highway. Cool. And then that kind of took uh, took off and went around the world and was re- very popular and uh, won some awards and nominated. So from then on, I kind of I uh, directed music videos for other people, and then I directed. Um, large uh, hour-long music specials got into that i did music specials for people like ann murray and i don't know if you know buffy saint marie oh yeah and, uh, yeah cory hart and uh, yeah. a bunch of big canadian artists and then i got into doing comedy and uh I, i've done a bunch of shows that are very popular in canada but you wouldn't have got that there was a show called corner gas and another show called black fly which he didn't get down here but mm-hmm. were very popular in canada they were comedies and then 
that my kids grew up and they all kind of flew off. And I, my wife and I looked at one, each other one day about four or five years ago and we were empty nesters. Mm-hmm. So I thought, wow, now would be the perfect time. I, I had always written throughout that You kept period. it going. You, weren't, you didn't just hang your guitar on the wall. No, and, I didn't play yeah. live. Yeah. But I played with my kids, and I played around with the kids and played them songs when they were younger. And my son played guitar a bit when he was in high school, so I jammed with him a bit. But uh, I didn't play out live or do anything like that. So, uh, And then I sat down about four or five years ago when we became empty nesters and just started playing around, and boof, a bunch of songs came out. And then I, we were living in Vancouver at the time, and uh, I thought, well, I'm going to go and do an open mic, see what happens. So I was terrified. I was like, you know, I was an older person, shall we say. I was like, you know, in my late 50s. And... Uh, you know, it's, it's to get up there after everything that I'd done and then play at an open mic for, you know, 12 or 15 people who you didn't know and to get back up there again, I was completely terrified. But I did it, and um, and I was just such a rush. I just went, wow, I can't believe I did that. And then I got addicted all over again, and awesome. I recorded some music, and here I am. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, that, I mean, we could talk a little bit offline, but I could ter- totally relate to that story completely. It's almost... Well, other than the fact that I didn't produce any mu- music videos, but, right? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's it's cool that you uh, kept doing it and you know just kept that passion for it. And, yeah, you know, yeah, it's always something that I loved, and I love to play live and uh, and to you know to make music. And uh, I've got a lot of musical friends now that uh, I hang out with, and you know, I, I play occasionally with a keyboard player, uh, but mostly I just play by myself because it's just so much easier. Just Mm-hmm. show up, plug in, play your songs, unplug and go home, and you don't have to worry about backline and does, are the drums arriving or where's this guy, where's that guy? It's all up to you. So, so hey, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live, and we have David Story um, here from Toronto, Canada, and uh, he's playing some tunes for us. And this is uh, 91.7 FM, and we're streaming live at wnjr.org if you want to pick up the stream and take it with you. Um, you want to do another tune? Sure, yeah. yeah. Cool. This is called um, Sea to Sky. Some folks say I was born Mountains meet the sea. My mother was a wild cat, my father, the great grizzly. And others say I'm from back east, no one really knows. Just a kid you heard about lives for rock and snow. And you might catch me in the early morning light. Way out on the spearhead, yeah, ripping through the alpine. Yeah, yeah, mama, see the sky, baby. scoundrel and I'm scary when I'm stoned all I own is a pickup truck and a pair of overlords and there ain't no man here ever gonna take me home just wanna look at me and I know I'm too far gone so don't go telling me Slide behind your mind Cause in that frozen wilderness Is where I know who I am Yeah, yeah Mama See the sky, baby See The sky
lay down my final tracks on a cold and crispy day when an ivy came and buried me in the bottom of Duffy Lake the spirits of the high and hard don't have much to say they guard their treasures jealously and they wait for your mistakes for every scary powder free breaking out over the line well I'll still be waiting for you way up in the alpine yeah yeah my my see the sky baby see sky Very nice. Is that on Thank the you. new record? That is on the new record, yes. And the uh, last loon on the lake. I'm just, they're so. both on. I'm going to play mostly just maybe one song that's not on the record, the new song. But that's a song about um, the Pacific Northwest. Mm. So Sea to Sky is the area between Vancouver and Pemberton, which is a, um, uh, a stretch of highway that goes up there. And it's uh, right on the coast. They call it the Coastal Mountain Range. I've been to Vancouver, but I haven't been beyond there. North, yeah. yeah. I've lived in Seattle, and I went from Seattle up to Vancouver. and so Yeah, yeah. it's that whole area, and there's a lot of... Uh, I like to, to get out into the backcountry, and I've done a lot of backcountry skiing, and, uh, yeah, and, that, and there's a lot of that down in around Seattle and Washington State, and uh, there's that Mount Washington, I think. Is, is that the name of it? Um, it's... it's um, that big mountain. You see it from Well, there's everywhere. Mount Baker... Maybe that that's you could it. Mount see Baker. From Vancouver. Yeah, yeah um, Mount Baker. Sorry, it's Mount Baker. Yeah, yeah. but the 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 big one, um, the other one, well, they're both volcanoes. I, it'll come to me. I, I yeah. can't, there's there's a couple. You know, there's two of them right around Seattle, and and you know, like on a day like today, it's like you're like, oh, I'm so happy I live out there. I know. <laughs> yeah, and like it's incredible. You're driving along the the cut or the Highway 99, the Sea to Sky Highway in Vancouver and you can see it it's way down in in Washington state and you can see the mountain and it's like it's right there in front of you it's an incredible mountain and you're looking like 100 miles you yeah. know that's the oh, part easy. That's at least bizarre miles. you know yeah so, yeah yeah and uh, so anyways i lived out there for a while and that song uh, there up up north of Vancouver up north of Pemberton which is sea to sky country there's a place called uh, Duffy Lake Provincial Park and way up in the mountains in Duffy Lake Provincial Park there's a cabin called Keith's Cabin, and I hiked up there with my brother. We were skiing up there, and basically the cabin's on a little rise inside some trees at the bottom of a glacier. So you hike up, stay overnight in the cabin, then hike up the glacier and ski down the glacier and then ski out, unless you want to stay for an extra day. And way back in the 80s, a kid had gone up there uh, and skied the glacier and was killed in a, an avalanche. And so his family built this cabin uh, in his honor for all the skiers. And so we all go up there and stay overnight in the cabin. And on the wall, there's a plaque that says, uh, and it's like, it's just a rudimentary cabin. There's like a, a wood stove and that's it, right? There's no bathroom or oh, wow. running water or anything like that. It's just a shelter. But anyway, um, so I, I saw this plaque and I just thought, started thinking, who the heck was this kid, Keith? And that, I, that in my imagination, that song is who Keith was. Gotcha. Yeah. It's... Uh Really interesting when you know, I've had three three uh, Canadian artists. I was talking earlier, right, you yeah. know, that have come on the show, and um, it, it's it's interesting for me th to think about you know crossing over, going into another country and playing. And plus, there's so many talented people that have come from Canada, right? You know, yeah. like Neil Young and Johnny uh, Mitchell, Joni Mitchell, and the band, the members Paul of Paul Anka, band. yeah. Uh, Paul Schaefer. Paul yeah. Schaefer, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to build the wall, like not the like Trump. <laughs> like, I think the, just to keep you guys, uh, your your guys are coming down to taking the musician jobs. I mean, come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> just, no, I'm, joking, no. I'm joking. No, I'm just joking. There's, yeah. I mean, you know, there we had Jesse Winchester up in our area for a yeah. long time. He was a conscientious, a conscientious objector and moved to Montreal and played up in Canada for years. 
amazing songwriter. Stuff has been covered by tons of. He's an American and um, or originally from America. And you know, I I think you know people in Canada generally kind of think that you know we're sort of like cousins or brothers or something. You know, yeah. like we don't yeah. really. I know I have lots of uh, friends from the U.S. who live up in Canada and work in Canada, and I know a lot of people who uh, um, are from Canada who live and work down here. And um, yeah. it's a great relationship, I think. You know, and I think Canadians, I think Canadians kind of have a better view on America than a lot of other countries around the world because we are so close. Yeah, I'm sure they still look at us and go like, oh, man, they're just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they do maybe over in Europe and in the Pacific Rim. I don't know. But in Canada, we've been here for a long time. So we know that the most people in America, despite what gets played out on the news, are not crazy. We know there's a... I have a lot of relatives that live down here, cousins. And, yeah. you know, my wife especially has lots of family here. So we, we tend to know it a little better. One of my fun, uh, the funniest, I remember that Michael Moore movie where he oh, went up yeah, and he yeah. went like door to door and he's like, yeah. Hey, is your door locked? Nobody yeah. locks your doors. And they're like, you know, the whole gun owner, got, yeah, gun owner thing, you know, and, and, uh, it, it was, it was eye opening to me. I just never, you know, well, that's, really. yeah, but that's, you know, that's yeah. Michael Moore, right? And yeah. I love Michael Moore, don't get me wrong, but there was a bit of exaggeration there. And, yeah. you know, he was trumpeting our health care system. And our health our healthcare system is good, but it's not without problems. Yeah. You know? There are definite... And it's getting better. It's getting better, but there are definite problems there. It's not... You know, some of the right-wing politicians in the U.S. tend to poo-poo it and, and tell, you know, stories about it that aren't necessarily true. They are right. It's not perfect, but mm-hmm. uh, what is perfect? But it's good. It's good for us, and it works for us. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. The uh, uh, well, we'll get into some of the other stuff I was thinking about talking about. There's always the. Ho- you know, I did get to the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto. That was. Oh. That was cool. That was yeah. really cool. You know, and uh, just the layout of the whole city is really like you know big broad street and the you know you can walk from. There's cafe people busking on the street oh, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And I yeah. was like, wow, this is really a uh, like an artistic town, you know? Oh like it, no, the Toronto is very multicultural as well. It's very there's a lot of people from all over the world there, and there a lot of them are, you know, second or third generation. So for example, you get people like Nazem Kadri, who's one of the star players on the Toronto Maple Leafs. He comes from a a Muslim background, mm-hmm. and but he's a hockey player. He's Canadian. He's a hockey player. He swears like a Canadian. He talks <laughs> like a Canadian. But I'm sure you know when he goes home, he's got the Muslim background. But he's a great hockey player, and we love him. You know. And uh, there's another guy called PK Subban, who's a uh, place for the Montreal Canadiens. He's from Toronto, and I believe I, I could be wrong, but I think he comes from like a Caribbean background. I think, huh. and uh, he's a great. You know, he just donated ten million dollars to the uh, Montreal uh, hospital in Montreal. I think it was a hospital for sick children. And I mean, you know, there we have a be- a great. We're rather than being a, a, a melt. I think one of the differences between Canada and the U.S. may be that rather than being a melting pot, where we tend to be much more accepting of maybe people's backgrounds and where they come from. I think. Yeah, we managed to steal Lemieux and uh, Sidney Crosby, though. You know. Oh, well, <laughs> and you had you also had um, our buddy uh, Connor McDavid here for a while up in Erie. Oh, okay. You know he was playing yeah. up for the Erie Otters, and yeah. now he's back up in Edmonton. So, uh, but you guys, I mean, there's some great. great hockey players. Jack Eichel, who plays for Buffalo. I mean, well, if you want to talk hockey, uh, we could go on. Well, I figure that I, so yeah. I'm not I'm not a big big hockey guy, but my son, man, he just mm. follows everything about the Penguins. He is like all. All in, and uh, I, you know, I, yeah. I like watching. I tend to watch more when the playoffs hit. You know, yeah, that's yeah. just. Yeah. Well, the Penguins yeah. stole. Uh, well, they didn't steal. We we had a guy on our team called Phil Kessel, who's an American from oh. Michigan, yeah, I heard a him. great hockey player, great goal scorer, but not such a great leader in the dressing room. You know, and so we traded him to Pittsburgh this year. So you now have him playing oh, okay. on a line with Crosby. Okay. Who it's going to be? That's going to be a killer line this year. They're going to score, put up a lot of points. That's what I hear. Yeah. I do have a hockey song. Cool. It's well, that that it's time about. for a song. Yeah. Yeah. So that might be a perfect lead in there. Can I? Um, 
I'm just going to do a little bit of an intro if I could. Sure. I play uh, rec hockey up in Canada, and we play. I play in. I don't want to call it a beer league. We call it the old timers league because we play during the day, so it's mostly retired guys. I'm not quite in retirement, but because of my the nature of my job, I don't have to be at anywhere at a particular time, so I can go out and play with these guys. And I play on a line with. Um, there's a guy. I play left wing. There's a guy in the who plays center. His name is Moose. And we call him Moose because he doesn't know how to turn very well. He can just skate straight. So he gets the puck and he just comes, as soon as he gets it in the defensive end, he just goes straight for the other net. And he's big. He's like six foot four, about 230 pounds. And everybody just gets out of his way. And he's like a moose crashing through the bush, right? Then there's uh, the right winger. His name is Dirty Don. We, I won't get into why we call him Dirty Don, except it has something to do with elbows. And then the, the, the two um, defensemen, the guy on the right is called Clutch and the guy on the left is called Grab because if anybody gets in front of our net, they're not into you know, fancy stick work. They just grab somebody into a bear hug or trip them <laughs> onto the ground and sit on them, right? <laughs> so, and then they call, me, uh, they call me the garbage man because I just stand in front of the net uh, the opposition's net and wait for a fortuitous bounce or for somebody to give me a pass. And I don't skate too far back into my own end. I just stay on the other side of the blue line. And then as soon as the puck comes out, I skate for the night and just stand in front and wait for, uh, for a bounce. Gotcha. So anyway, this, is, this song is about me and my buddies playing hockey. But I think it uh, could be for anybody anywhere playing any kind of sports. Scored a goal last night in the Trout Lake Men's Rec League. Took a pass from Long Shot Larry, and I split the D. And I cut to the middle, wind in my face, and the game on my stick. Only thing standing between me and glory is Butsy his glove hand so quick and the moon shone bright on my little corner of the world snowflakes danced across my back and the river's been frozen for six or seven weeks now if you listen closely you can hear it crack Stooby Cooter chased me down with his taped up gloves and his toothless grin. But I made like Mario and slipped the rubber right between his shins. Then I cut to the middle and I let a wrister fly. It popped in top shelf, way up where the peanut butter hides. And the moon shone bright in my little corner of the world. Snowflakes danced across my back. And the river's been frozen for six or seven weeks now. If you listen closely, you can hear it crack. And someday soon, this river's gonna melt And everything will wash away Right now, it's frozen tight And I just want to play I just want to Captain Matt, he skated up and he tapped me on the bum and he said, Hey, Sergey, where the hell did that come from? And the moon shone bright in my little corner of the world. Snowflakes danced across my back. 
And the river's been frozen For six or seven weeks now If you listen closely Scored a goal last night in the Trout Lake Men's Rec League. Cool, I like that, <laughs> man. That's Thanks. yeah. Writing a song about hockey. I mean, how do you how do you come to like, you know, think about something like that? You know, like I'm gonna write a, write a song about, you know, I guess it's kind of like. You know, the ba- like a, a baseball song, like yeah, uh, exactly. Like put him yeah. in, coach. The what's his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. There's a you know, there's a, a <clears throat> lot of hockey songs. Um, I, that one's unusual in that it's not written about like somebody famous or the NHL or I want to make it big or you know, mm-hmm. this is sort of about the guy who is just playing you know rec league style hockey and um, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I f- what happened is I when you score a goal it's a great feeling I find anyways even if it's just in a crappy pickup game when you score a goal it's a great feeling so I remember one night I was playing in a league and I scored a couple of goals and I was driving home and you know uh, I live in the Halton Hills north of Toronto it's very similar to what you have around here it's beautiful and uh, kind of hilly and um, leaves were changing and the snow was coming down and I just scored two goals and that song just kind of bang came into my head. If, yeah. yeah. If you, um, growing up Canadian, I mean, it's such a part of hockey is just such a part of being Canadian. I would imagine. Yeah, It's, it's interesting because <clears throat> our, our politicians aren't exactly what, what I, I would imagine it's a little bit similar here. We're a little bit suspect of our politicians and they're not really, um, our heroes, our heroes tend to be Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Sidney Crosby, all the guys that play for Team Canada, and uh, as well as, uh, to a certain extent, our musicians, you know, like Neil Young, Joni Mitchell, all the, the Canadian musicians that, uh, that we mentioned before. So um, those tend to be our heroes as opposed to uh, um, those who are the people that we idolize in Canada. And yeah. Sure. Yeah, the I I think we pretty much have given up on all politicians down here. It's, yeah, <laughs> we're right ready to throw them all out. Yeah, it's, well, we're in the middle of a federal election in Canada right now, and it's just about the same. We're ready to throw them all out too. I, I kind of keep a little bit, you know. I, I don't know too much about that. Um, the whole tar sands thing, I've been keeping up because I'm an environmentalist, so I've yeah. been keeping an eye oh, on yeah. that. You know, yeah. Keystone Pipeline thing, and yeah. like you know, um, but uh, you know, I I just wondered. As you know, being a Canadian, um, I would think that one of the things you have to it's, uh, it's like you have to like just accept that in the winter the weather is going it's just going to be cold and you have to get outside and do stuff or otherwise you'll just be inside all the time. I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, you have to accept the outdoors. Uh, accept it, and you know and. Uh, you know, I, I, that's why, you know, we're up in the mountains, we were talking earlier about uh, the backcountry skiing and stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, I've done a lot of skiing and hockey and taking advantage of, of the winter months because it can be beautiful. And, uh, you know, there obviously it's the same um, in this area, I would imagine the occasional bad storm comes through and knocks out power and, you know, those kinds of things. But in general, it's, you know, uh, it can be fantastic the winter season and, getting out and skating on the ponds and cross-country skiing and all the things that you can do. It's, uh, it's fantastic. If I could just back up just one quick second there, but when you're talking about the tar sands and the uh, Keystone Pipeline, we just had, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Alberta, was, which is where the tar sands are located, just had an election um, mm-hmm. about a year ago, or not even a year ago, maybe six months ago. And before that, for 40 years, it had been a hardcore right-wing conservative government. And the people of Alberta kicked out that government and brought in an NDP government, which would be way to the left of your Democratic Party. Wow. And they have put a, um, um, they, they have come out and said, we do not want the, the Keystone Pipeline. And they've really restricted uh, the uh, tar sands and what they can and cannot do. And they've, they've taken charge of the situation, which, and the woman that runs it, not, uh, Rachel Notley, I think is her name, I'm not sure if that's her first name, but her last name is Notley. Anyway, they've really um, 
taken over and really changed the perspective. And I think you're going to see in the years ahead that the tar sands are going to be uh, operated in a different manner and things are going to be a lot different in Alberta and up in that part of the country. I, uh, you know, have been following the indigenous tribes stuff that's going on with the tar sands. Yeah, and how they're like yeah. basically like, you know, oh, we're just going to build this right across your land uh, without really being able to legally and they just show up, you know, and they're like keep kicking them off and yeah. that type of thing. And, I, you know, I'm somewhat aware of that. Um, and I know Neil Young has come out and it's been very, you know, Yeah, he's about been up that. there and walked around and talked to the people up there. And um, I think, you know, there's two sides to the story. I think, you know, there, it, they do, uh, there is jobs to be provided up there in that mm-hmm. industry and Native people, uh, First Nations people, definitely can take advantage of that and have taken advantage of that as far as the jobs are concerned. But it has to be done properly and it has to be, you know, Rachel Notley, the new premier, is really taking a different approach to it and scaling it all back and, and uh, you know, not letting them recklessly, the companies reckless. Right before with the conservative government, it was just like the doors open, do whatever the heck you want, just, you know, get it going. Now it's they're going to be severely restricted. So I think you'll be... The First Nations people, it won't be perfect harmony, but it'll be way better than it was. Well, that's good to know. I mean, because when I look, when they, when you look at it from a perspective of, from what I understand, it's very carbon intensive to actually take the carbon out. Um, that you have the energy that you put in to get it out is actually like the the benefits of of burning that fuel, and because of all the. Um, refining that has to go in their bit, bitumen i think is bitumen, it, yeah. bitumen yeah. is in it they have to, all this stuff that they have to do um it it doesn't make a lot of sense you know as far as like uh the net maybe energy and it income that comes from that um it is a very very you know, it's a big resource. I mean, I guess the, it's, there's enough oil there that compares to like Saudi Arabia or something, but the amount of energy that you have to put in. To, to so. get it out. Well, you know, I mean, for them, it was worth it when the when the uh, dollar was at, or when the price of oil was at like $100 there. a barrel or something. Now it's not worth it. But um, I think you're absolutely right. The You know, they have to boil water, then they need natural gas to boil the water, so they use all this natural gas to boil the water. They suck the water out of the rivers up there. And not we're not talking a little bit of water. We're talking a lot of water they're sucking out. Then they have to boil the the sands in order to separate the tar from the sand. And it's super energy. They're not just drilling into the ground and sucking oil out. It's super energy intensive. And Mm -hmm. uh, But, um, you know... Uh, I think, uh, as I say, things with uh, the new government there, and I think you know you may find a new Trudeau as a as the head of the Canadian government, and I think that'll be a good thing. Cool. Um, in, in this next election. So. Well, cool. Um, in case you just joined us, you're listening to Acoustic Songs Live from WNJR Studios in Washington, Pennsylvania, and we have Mr. David Story here uh, from Toronto. Hence, we were talking about all things Canadian, and uh, I certainly do appreciate you coming from toronto to come here on our show and and oh, share a, your music and uh it's great to have you here um you want to play another tune sure yeah cool Let's... this is uh, my wife and i uh volunteer at a, a an organization in and around toronto that helps ex-cons reintegrate themselves um into uh mainstream society and uh basically my wife cooks a big she does all the work she cooks a big dinner and i help her load it in we take it down to the, the basement of a church set it up the ex-cons comes down and it's really interesting because the ex-cons are sp- split pretty evenly between men and women so there's a lot of women ex-cons that come to this and uh we have a big dinner then we all as i say it's in a church so we all stand around hold hands and and sing hymns and then we sit in a circle and the ex-cons tell us their story and one woman beside me, who was sitting beside me, who was an ex-con, and I won't tell your story except to say it was horrific, but at the end of it all, she said something interesting. She said, those who have been forgiven know a lot about love. And I thought, wow, that's interesting, coming from somebody with her background. And um, so it kind of spurred this song. Blood on the floor, 
city hall tonight The mayor and the press are fighting Over money, lies, and pride and You can hear the racket Way out on the east side There's kids running round with guns, death behind their eyes. But there's a candle burning in the church of St. Adelaide. The lost and sick have washed up, and they're looking for a break. They're holding hands and singing songs of love and hope and Faith, the candles are burning in Saint Adelaide. Money is all north of Bloor, and it ain't trickling down. The cabbies down in Parliament just barely holding. The freeway is crumbling And it's hard to get around Shadows from those tall dark towers Stretch all over town But there's a candle burning In the church of St. Adelaide Lost and sick have washed up and They're looking for a break They're holding hands and singing songs of love and hope and faith The candles are burning in St. Adelaide Money sings and money laughs Money wants it all Money knows just where to land While we take the fall So here we sit from different worlds Your body marked in hand Me, I'm scrubbed and fed and uneasy As I ask you what you think Proud and sad you look at me Voice soft as a dove and You say, those who have been forgiven Know a lot about love there's a candle burning in the church of St. Adelaide. The lost and sick have washed up. They're looking for a break. They're holding hands and singing songs of love and hope and faith. The candles are burning. The candles are burning the candles are burning in Saint Adelaide nice good what yeah what a what a great song what oh, a great thank you. just uh you know what it's written about Redemption, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, understanding yeah. that and, and uh, you know, being in that place that, you know, there, that you feel it and then understand what it's all about. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, I wrote it at a time when um, I'm sure you're aware of Rob Ford. Oh, yeah. Rob Ford was oh, the sorry. mayor of Toronto. Yeah, sorry I laughed, but and, I mean. Well, that's okay. Everybody else was laughing, especially the people in Toronto. 
Uh, but the whole city just felt like the guy was just not with it, right? I don't know how he got in there. It was sort of like electing Donald Trump in a way. No hard offenses, Donald Trump, but... No, that's fine. If you know what I mean. And um, <laughs> yeah, he, I he had, came from that same kind of blustery attitude, right? But he... <laughs> The city just felt like it was falling apart, and it was just incredible traffic jams and chunks falling out of the Gardner Expressway. And oh no! But and then I would go to this church, and there's all these people who have all those problems, and they're creating positive energy and trying to, you know, integrate themselves back into. Now, mind you, their lives weren't that great, but they and they'd done some pretty horrible things, but um, they were trying to get to make things work, you know, and I just found that interesting, that dichotomy between the two. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, that, I guess, being on this side of the, you know, in America and seeing that stuff going on with, with him, Mr. Ford, and, uh, you know, in the headlines every night on The Daily Show and stuff like yeah. that, you know, he was just like, <laughs> yeah. now it's, it is every night, it's like, okay, what did Donald Trump say today, you know, yeah. and, and it's almost... I mean, other than the fact that the guy's a billionaire, yes, you know, and he's apparently never drank or did drugs ever. He said that in one of these interviews. You know, that was something right. that. I well, guess that's one of his different uncle, because yeah, uncle, Rob Ford was uh, a serial abuser of drugs and alcohol. Yeah, but he's still. I mean, whatever whatever Trump has, it's still like some kind of you know, it's like a little kid you know, yelling at somebody like, you know, you made fun of me, so I'm going to make fun of you kind of thing every night. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's really It's really interesting, bizarre. you know, in, uh, like in, in, in America, um, and it's the same in Canada. It's getting to be the same in Canada. It just seems to be the person who can shout the loudest is the one who gets hurt. Squeaky wheel gets the grease, That's right? That's right. The, the people, it's, it's not necessarily the thoughtful or the smart people. It's the people who shout the loudest that gets the attention and that yeah. people want to talk about. Although I have to say, you know, just from a personal perspective and again, from the outside looking um, down into uh, uh, the U.S., I, I just have to say uh, that Obama just seems to be such a together president for you guys. I mean, we would love to have him up in Canada. I know that's probably <laughs> going to piss off a lot of people down here, but... He really seems like he's uh, thoughtful he's and mindful about thoughtful, what he does. Yeah, you know, like thoughtful he, and and you know, I, I just I don't want to get into the details. Yeah. other than to say from the outside, all I'm saying yeah. is, looking down here, he seems like a really thoughtful, um, smart person who's trying yeah. to do the right thing. Yeah, well, cool. Um, it, it, I wanted to let everybody know that to to find your music, um, for them to go to your website. DavidStoryMusic.com because I did a search for David Story and there's a whole bunch I didn't realize there's some other David Stories out there. Well, there's a famous David Story who's an author in England, and uh, he's done. He has a you know he's got he's had books published all around the world, and they made a movie out of one of his books called The Sporting Life that mm. I believe starred Richard Harris. And uh, okay, he's the most famous David Story. Okay, but well. I'm giving him a run for his money. <laughs> Gosh darn it! And that's David Story spelled S T O R E Y Music dot com, yeah. and uh, there's all the information there about uh, David's uh, new record. How, when did you release? Yeah, this? it was released in June. June. Okay. Yeah. And uh, his new uh, record called, um, I'm looking at here. It's called Coming Home. Coming Home. Yeah. And check that out. Um, I'm sure it's available on all the... Yeah, it's available on the website. It's available on um, uh, a, play, a thing called Indie Pool, uh, which is like CD Baby. Mm -hmm. It's not on a label. It's self-released. I'm doing it myself. And I'm uh, hopefully going to do a, a broader release here in the U.S. in January, February. And I'm hopefully going to be maybe doing some touring here. We're working on getting the paperwork mm -hmm. uh, converted um, in March, April, May, in the spring. We'll at least put, dip my toe in the water and see how it goes. Well, and, well I'm sorry. Good. Yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, well, what was it like? You've been the guy, um, you know, the director, you know, making music videos and, and doing all the studio work and so forth. The guy behind that scene. What was it like for you to step into the artist um, point and... Did you necessarily hand that over to somebody else, or how? Well, how, the how last, um, the last, uh, what is it now? I'd say the last ten years, I've been really working on one project in Canada. It's called Corner Gas, and it's a, a half-hour uh, comedy about a bunch of 
Waukee people who live in a small town outside, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, out in the middle of Saskatchewan. So um, I've been focusing on that, and I was directing it, and I was also an executive producer. And the, the ideas that we were putting into that show are kind of similar to the ideas that I'm putting into my music in that... You know, the song I just sang about rec hockey. I mean, we did a whole episode about rec hockey. And, mm. uh, um, you know, they, it's a comedy, so we don't touch too much on social issues. But there's a lot of similarities. The, the creative side is, I'll tell you the big difference is when I'm directing, um, I've got like probably 75, 80 people following me around going, okay, what are we doing next? Where are we going? What's happening? You know, actors and technicians and camera people. And, and there's a lot of pressure on you to... Uh, to be able to come up with the answers right away and say, okay, we're going here, we're going to shoot this, and this is what you have to do. Whereas the thing I love about this is I just show up, me and my guitar, plug mm. it in, start playing my songs, and then I unplug it and go home. I don't have to... Um, I mean, there's obviously the pressure pressure to perform in front of an audience, but it's just a great... It's just... And when I'm writing, it's just me and the guitar, and, you know, it's... Uh, I really love... There's a freedom there. You know, where mm -hmm. you can just... And I can play anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. I can come down here and play. I can, you know, I play a lot around Toronto. I played out in Vancouver. And I can just go anywhere and play and do whatever I want with the music. Whereas with the directing and producing, it's a huge production. And you just can't do yeah. it on the spur of the moment. But I, what I kind of meant, though, was like when you went into the studio. I mean, did you have another producer or an engineer doing... I mean, or did you do all that on your own? Did you like no, find I, had, studio uh, and, oh. I had... I um, had... Uh, an engineer, producer engineer, uh, who's done a lot of work with a lot of different people. He was involved with Sarah McLaughlin at the beginning of her career. He's worked with an artist, uh, an American artist called Nico Case. I don't know if you know Nico Case. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. worked with her, produced, co-produced some of her stuff. Mm -hmm. And he's worked with a, a band in Canada, I'm not sure if you're aware of, called Blue Rodeo. Do you know Blue Rodeo? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Blue Rodeo, um, he's worked with them. So he happens to have this barn that he's converted into a studio, which is about a 10-minute drive from my house. Oh, wow. With north, I live out in the country, north of, of where I live. So I went in one day and said, hey, my name's David, I'm here, I've got some tunes, and I live down the road, and uh, do you mind if I come in and we do this? And he said, sure. So uh, we put it together. We did it quickly, because, you know, when you're independent, you don't have a lot of money, and you got to get it done fast. Yeah, yeah. And so we hired a local uh, bluegrass band, really good bluegrass band, called Traditionally Wound. They've won all kinds of awards in, in Canada and Southern Ontario. And some of the members, not all of them, but some of the members came in and backed me up on it. And it was just like an afternoon. Awesome. They came in, I played Lassoon on the Lake, and okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. We just did it, right? Yeah. I was just wondering, you know, like after you're the guy that's kind of directing all that, and then you, you know, get go in and somebody is actually going like maybe hey, I think that arrangement would, you know, work this way or something, you know, something to that effect, you know, it's kind of, oh, it's, okay. it's a different yeah. perspective that you're like turning over the reins, maybe somewhat creatively to somebody else. And yeah, in, in that way that you're, you know, rather than you being the, per, the you know, it, it would, uh, to me seem like, hmm, that'd be interesting, you know. But, yeah, no, it was really, it was really yeah. good. And it's really um, rewarding to be working on, on stuff that I find to be relevant to myself. Cool. Like when I was doing Corner Gas, and uh, I thought it was a great show, really funny, really struck a chord in, in Canada. And it was on WGN in the U.S. and struck a chord, but it's it had a lot of authenticity. Mm. And uh, so I feel like the music that I'm playing now, I'm just continuing on in that vein in the fact that I feel that the music I'm playing and my performances are authentic. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to keep going. I had a lot of offers to do shows after Corner Gas that stuff for that m might not have been um, sort of, I guess you could call it porridge for the masses, if mm. you know what I mean. And uh, I, fortunately, I was in a position that I didn't have to take those jobs. So, so um, the... Uh can people find those uh, episodes online? You can some? find it on YouTube. Okay, cool. Corner uh, Gas. Check Just out Qu put Corner in Gas. Corner Gas, and you'll see them. There's 107 of them. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. I'm going to check it out now. Yeah. I want anyway, David, it's been great having you here today, right. and uh, we got you know time for probably one more song if sure. you would like to take us out playing something, and sure. uh, you know, uh, and uh, do do keep us uh, in the loop on uh, you know you coming back in. 
and to play uh, do your tour. Uh, sure, love yeah, to, absolutely. You know, yeah. well, thank you very can. much. I really appreciate you having me here, well, and all great. the listeners out there. I hope you enjoyed the music, and uh, I'll play this um, song. It's called "I Can't Complain," and this is a, such a beautiful area here. When singing this song, it kind of my it's about small town North America. So um, I hope that the listeners can relate to this. Sarah drives the school bus Lord knows we can use the cash Me, I fix small engines Out back in my garage Not like the way the leaves turn in the fall I like fireworks on the long weekend And I like a case of beer And hockey on TV I can't complain I won't sing the sad refrain The sunshine follows rain And the world will turn again I can't complain Join the forces Said it's what he Was born to do They gave him a gun And sent him To the Middle East Y'all love him Hope he gets home Soon Not like The colored lights of Christmas I like the way the snow drifts up against my shed And I like the smell of wheat After it's been cut I can't complain I won't sing sad refrain The sunshine follows rain The world will turn again I can't come to keep it simple don't let the world turn my head I only take what I can use yeah I like the way the leaves turn in the fall and I like fireworks and long weekend and I like a case of beer on TV I can't complain I won't sing sad refrain sunshine follows rain the world will turn again I can't come